Welcome to our Tech Explainer video. Today, we're diving into a fascinating question from one of our viewers. They want to know why a metal shader gradient appears lighter when applied to a scene kit node compared to when it's rendered in a metal kit view. To give you some context, our viewer has created a gradient using a metal fragment shader on a plane geometry and scene kit. They notice that the colors look darker when using the same shader in an MTK view within an Xcode playground. So, what could be causing this difference in appearance? Welcome back to another technical video. Today I'll be going through your questions, answering them and hopefully finding that solution that you're looking for. Guys, remember to say just a little bit crazy just like me and hopefully get to that resolution you need. Now, let's get started. Let's explore why the gradient appears lighter when using a metal shader and scene kit compared to a metal kit view. In scene kit, the default lighting is turned off, which means the colors are rendered directly without any lighting effects. This can lead to a brighter appearance of the gradient. In contrast, when using MTK view, the colors may appear darker due to the default lighting settings or additional effects applied in that context. To ensure consistent color output, you can adjust the lighting settings in scene kit or modify the shader to account for lighting effects. Finally, always test your shaders in both environments to understand how they interact with the rendering pipeline and lighting models. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. To address the issue of the metal shader gradient appearing lighter in scene kit than in MTK view, the solution involves adjusting the rendering settings. By setting SCN Disable Linear Space Rendering to true in the application's PLIST, you can enforce gamma space rendering across the application. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. The issue might be with how you're calculating the size of the node. It seems your UV coordinates are affected by the node's position. Instead of summing the bounding box dimensions, you should find the absolute difference. This prevents the size from increasing as the node moves. Also, consider that the desired UV coordinates might already be available in the in-tex chords variable. And that's it guys. We've gone through, found the solutions, and hopefully answered your query. If it did, please hit subscribe. I really appreciate it. And until next time, hope you have a good one. Cheers.